All right, everybody. So you want to make a normal map from some 3D stuff you have. Well, it's not too hard. Um, we can just clear out our scene here, reset our camera, Alt-G, Alt-R, Alt-S. Um, we're going to point it down, and we're going to make an orthographic camera here. So first of all, let's just set it to be... We're going to use cycles here. Um, we're going to have a 1024 by 1024 camera. If we wanted to have... 2K textures, we would double that resolution. And then in our camera, we're going to be using a orthographic camera with a scale of one, meaning that the camera width will be filled by one single unit. So if I move my camera up, just to make it a little easier to see, if I add in a plane and make it one meter, one blender unit, you can see it perfectly fills the camera. Um, so right along here, that's great. Now we could do something as simple as say, <clears throat> um, let's say we've modeled out some uh, really nice looking thing and we want to make it a normal map. We could just go shade smooth and we could use the normal map mat cap here and we could just uh, viewport render here. And uh, there's some little dots and things we'd have to just we'd have to just disable all this. Um, we would want to make sure though, this is very important, that our display is set back to standard, not AGX, so that nothing is messed up there. We don't want any of our colors getting messed up. There we go. And we would have just as simple as that, a nice normal map. Now this works, but what if, let's say I have instead. Let me just turn this world back up to one so you can see a little better. Let's say I have something a little bit more complicated. Let's say I have something like this set of leaves right here. Um, and as you can see, let me delete this sphere. Um, and we can move this plane down. As you can see, these have some normal mapping on them. But they are actually only transparent planes now as you can see this doesn't look correct at all and if we were to bake textures or anything this transparency issue would also cause us a lot of headaches but that's not the end of the story we can still get all of this nice detail and directionality into a normal map pretty simply once again we got to make sure that we've got a square texture our view standard is set to view transform as standard and uh, we're just going to turn on a couple of things in our view layer settings. And that is the normal pass. Now, I'm trying to make this a texture that I can use in um, a game engine. So I also want to have a albedo, like diffuse pass of just the color. And then also, I'm going to want an ambient occlusion pass as well for that. Um, so now, if we do a render, well, so here we go. <clears throat> we'll just wait for that. The noise threshold should speed it up after a little bit. Yep, there it goes. And with that, perfect. Um, one thing I did forget here, we do want to have a transparent background. So on film, I'm going to turn on transparent. We'll re-render. Um, now, as you can see, all that detail is there. We've got that normal mapping. Um, the leaves look correct. Um, unlike if we had tried to do that viewport render trick that I showed you earlier. But what we're going to do now, is once this finishes rendering in a second here, we're actually going to go into our compositing workspace, click use nodes, and here we are. Now I've got the node wrangler add on on, so I can just control shift click. There we go, we got a viewer. And as you can see, um, we've got our image here. We've got the alpha channel, we've got a normal map, diffuse color, ambient occlusion, looking great. Um, now, one issue is that this normal map doesn't look correct. If I pull up an actual normal map, it should look something more like this. Um, and as you can see, these colors are not the same. If I were to try and use this normal map, it would give me all sorts of issues. Now, what are we to do about this? The issue 
happens to be the range of colors, how this color conversion is happening. See, if we take a separate and combine XYZ, we can take this norm this is a is a vector um and it's actually in a range from negative one to one on each of these x y and z the problem is when we plug it into an image export that clamps it down between zero and one so we miss half the information and it's incorrect so in order to convert this to a standard more normal map sort of type what we need to do is do a map range here we are and we're going to go from negative 1 to 1 is now going to be from 0 to 1. And as you can see, um, now we can see that that lighting from that direction looks correct. I'll just duplicate this down. Do the same for Y. We'll hook these back in. X, Y, and last of all, um, Z. As you can see, now that's looking a lot more familiar. <clears throat> we're working in an sRGB color space, which means that our colors are not mapped uniformly. So we do need to make sure and put a gamma node right here set to 2.2. And this, as you can see, is already looking a lot more. See how those colors are looking like it's supposed to. Um... Now, this gray in the background is because originally it was black there on the normal channel. And now, on each of these, black has now become 0.5. So that's why it's a mid-gray. We can fix that. We'll just add a set alpha node um, right after this. Gamma, excuse me. And we're just going to plug that alpha right into there. And with that... We just need to convert it to be pre-multiplied alpha. And make sure we're using... Oops. There we go. So we do not need to be set. Let's see here. Ah, there we go. We need to be replacing alpha. There we go. Two pre-multiplied. And with that, looks fantastic. Okay. So there's our normal map. Now, <clears throat> as for the rest of these the diffuse, albedo, etc. We'll just copy these, set alpha over. That would be our diffuse right here. Um, we won't need the conversion though. Okay, so there's normal, there's our diffuse. And then last of all, we'll just copy this over. Shift D that. For our ambient occlusion. Now, this ambient occlusion, we do have the unfortunate issue of the fact that the background is transparent. We we don't want that bleeding over. Um, so I'm going to just do a alpha, simple alpha over here. Um, over a 0 0.5 so that it's a nice easy background there um, but you could also set this to white but then now as you can see oops um, our ambient occlusion is looking a lot better and then when this gets mipped mapped it'll look correct as well now to get these all exported nice and easily we can just add a file output node and we'll just set that to slash slash textures slash the slash slash will be the folder that your blender file is saved in and then it will make a folder with in that folder called textures and we'll put them in here so we'll go to the node and make sure we've got one for diffuse and we're going to add one for the normal map and then last one ambient occlusion in this ambient occlusion one, we are going to <clears throat> just set it to be black and white. We don't need the alpha channel information. But we'll just plug those in. And with that, diffuse, normal, alpha, ambient occlusion, we should be good. When we hit render, 
it will export those files. Now I already have done this and here is what it's going to give us um, for the normal map. The albedo and then the ambient occlusion looks perfect. Now one thing we're going to want to do is for this normal map here um, we're going to want to have a background similar to this. Um, so we can either A, uh, do this alpha over here on the normal. And let's see, I think that I just disconnected that from the wrong one. Okay, if we take their normal map instead, flip it around, we're going to want to put this on a zero zero sorry 0 0.5 0 0.5 one background and as you can see that's the sort of normal purpley normal map color that you're we're also used to um but then once again that's going to need the gamma so actually let's see a color value We're going to just do a quick little, oops, combine. We're going to just copy these two nodes over. And we're going to go 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 1. And then this will be our background. Perfect. Okay, let's re reorganize this a little bit so it's not so messy. Here's our map ranges. Combine X, Y, Z, adjust the gamma. We're going to then fix the alpha. We're going to put over it a neutral. Normal map color. And then that will be our normal map. Straight into the normal. Oops. Our diffuse is just fine as it is. And our ambient occlusion also just fine. And with that, <clears throat> we should be good to export. Um, now these edges can be a little bit harsh. So uh, one thing that you could do and that I would recommend is if you use um, a free app called Krita, um, or you could use uh, the GNU image manipulation program GIMP that's also just fine but what you're going to want to do is open Qt, the gimmick filter selection and use this solidify filter uh, set it to isotropic and um, apply that might take a second and this will generate a nice smooth um, transition from your normal map as such that way when you're using it in a game engine it gets mip mapped down it'll look a lot better on the edges um but yeah now just to prove that this works i'm going to open up a scene where i did this earlier now what we have here is the actual mesh and then here i have just plugged in um, to a shader, that diffuse, uh, that normal map, set to non-color through a normal map, and then a ambient occlusion um, node, all plugged into just a standard principled BSDF. And as you can see, if I go into camera view, and uh, let's just really quickly here, make it so that it's not darkening anything. I have a sunlight that I can rotate the angle on. And do you notice anything? It is the exact same. The lighting is in the exact same locations. So if I make this really obvious, I don't know, with some strong pink lighting or, or something, you can see these highlights 
are going to be in the exact spot on the actual leaves as they are on this normal mapped version here, which is just phenomenal. Um, so that is how you would export those settings there. If you needed to do things such as um, roughness, um, etc., things that aren't in those view layers, you'd have to render out some separate things for those. But uh, hopefully that is helpful for helping uh, pull into a game engine or just creating some normal maps from things you've created. But yep, uh, hope that helps and I'll see you later.